Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at something that is pretty interesting. So if you've always wanted to do simulations and you're looking for a free tool that you can use to do that, at least for now, then you're in luck as today we're taking a look at Storm Hydro FX. And Storm Hydro FX is a beautiful tool made available by Sebastian, the creator of Storm. And this is one amazing tool that you can use to do amazing simulation. As Storm is a standalone VFX particle simulation program that allows you to quickly set up and create both sand, snow, rigid, and soft body -like like simulations and materials for your 3D project. And Storm currently ships with an additional offer of an experimental support for clothes and sparse smoke fluid dynamics. As Storm comes with a multi solver that allows you to relatively create simulation quickly and use them in any DCC app of choice. And today we're seeing that they've just announced the Hydro FX. A Hydro FX is a simplified standalone version of Storm, which actually uses the flip solver to allow you create fluid simulations easily. And right now you can simply get this for free. And of course, for those who would like to get this i'm gonna put a link in the description that will bring you right here where you can download this and with that said let's dive right into the program and explore what you need to know and how you can get started with it and how you can also use this with blender and so once you download and unzip the file you would notice that we've got different kinds of folders here that include geometry documents the demo scenes and also the bin within the bin is where you find the executable file which you need to double click to run and this is what Storm Hydro FX currently looks like. It is worth mentioning that this tool is in beta and a couple of things are still under development. So how you get to work with this is very easy. For you to start creating fluid simulation, all you need to do is to add a system by simply going over to add system and add the flip system. Now this flip system is the container where all your fluid simulation would happen. And if you like to increase the scale of this, you can simply do that by going over to any of the axes that you want and you can dial in a value that you choose. And once you have that ready, we can add a simple source, which in this case is gonna be this, and we can also go ahead and add a simple collider. Now this is running with GPU, which means that simulation is definitely going to be faster. So for collider, I'm simply going to throw that in, and how you navigate across the viewport is very easy. With Alt, left click, you can orbit, Alt, middle click, you can pan, and Alt, right click, you can zoom in and zoom out. And for you to move things around is also super easy. For example, if we like to move the source all the way up, what we need to do is press W on the keyboard and we get our transform gizmo, which we can use to translate this all the way up. At the same time, if we tap E on the keyboard, we can also use this to rotate. And if we tap R on the keyboard, we can scale in and scale out. And to simulate is super easy. So for us to get that going, all we need to do is press the space bar and we have some simulation. So in this case, if I would like to possibly increase the collider, we can of course go ahead and do that. Let's reset this and I can just go ahead and increase the scale of the collider and raise this all the way up. And if I press the space bar one more time, you can also notice that we have this simulation going on. And you can see this is pretty quick. There are certain settings that I will definitely recommend that you do depending on what you're trying to create at the time. One of the settings I would recommend you do is if you go over to the collider, you may want to go over to where you have delete particles and set this to true. And from our experience testing this out, what this simply does is it actually deletes anything that would find a way to penetrate right outside here. Another thing you might also want to do is to go over to the flip source and from the flip source, you can choose to hide and unhide it. So for example, if we don't want this to be visible, we can right click and click on false and it's not going to be visible. And if we like that to be visible, we can do that too. You might also notice that we have different kinds of directions as well alongside speed of emission. So you can also click and dial in the value that you want for that. So this is a very, very simple tool that can allow you to do simulations. And at any point in time, you like to change any of the emitters or maybe any of the colliders. You can have that selected, dial in the part here, or you can click on change geo and you can select the geometry that you want. So in this case, I might want a cup to be our emitter. So we can have that and automatically we have the scope as our emitter. And of course, once we press the space bar, we can go ahead and move this around and get our simulation playing back as much as we want. So in certain instances, you might want a longer or a shorter timeline. In this case, if we would like this to be about 80, we can just simply select that, dial in 80 and that's it. And so with this done, what about if you like to animate your stuff? Say for example, you might want this to spin or maybe you like it to go left and right, depending on the kind of thing that you want to do. And so for that, what we can do is to simply go over to our translate X, which is what we currently have. So I'm just going to set this to minus two so we can have that. So if we like that to be keyframe from frame zero, 
we can simply hold down alt on the keyboard and click and then we can go over to frame 10 for example and i can go in and move this to say two and we're also going to hold down alt on the keyboard and click again and so what we've just done is add keyframes and these keyframes would work when this animation starts playing and the same thing works with this if you like to keyframe the motion of this whole thing you can of course also go ahead and do that and this simply means that from our frame zero all the way to frame 15 like what we have here this simulation is going to be playing back now there are things that are not here which i would love to see which includes copying keyframes pasting keyframes those are not yet here in fact there's a list of things i would love to see and hopefully we get to speak with the developers and discuss those now with that said for you to start getting this animation out how you can do this is very simple so for that, we're going to create a brand new scene, add a system, and just simply throw in a source. Oh, before we even do that, right here, you would notice we've got forces. And with the forces, you can either throw in wind and control how you like the wind to be. Hopefully, this gets a bit more update, and we'll talk about that in subsequent videos. So for this, for us to actually start doing the simulation, we're simply going to press the playback, and we're going to have this simulate something like so exporting this is where the whole thing actually makes a lot of sense and for us to export this what we need to do is to set the part where we would like this exporting to be done and for that you need to go over to the global settings and from here you need to enter the cache folder url and if you like to have an image part you can also enter that url right here as well other ways that you can load the url includes going over to the file section and going over to where you have your preference now within your preference you can browse and select the desired folder that you want your caching to be done so we can do that there and we can simply just go ahead and make a simple copy and paste that somewhere like that and with that we can click on close now if we go over to our flip system we can go all the way down and we can change the particle format that we would like to export to either alembic or we can change this to USD. Now, if you simply change this to USD, this is going to export VDB files and we leave them as a Lambic, they will export ABC files. And in this case, we would like to get the VDB, so I'm just simply going to set this to USD. Other things you might want to do includes writing the VDB surfaces. Maybe you like to have that, we can go ahead and do that. If you like to also write the foam particles, you can also go ahead and turn that on. And if you like to simply emit foams, you can also go in and turn that on as well. But for this video, what we just want to do is to simply get this sorted out and export that to Blender. And I'm simply going to also say for you to export things out, you might want to go over to the file menu, preference and say write caches while seeming. And so once we have that there, we can click on close, send this all the way back. And if we press the simulation button, as this starts simulating automatically, it starts writing to disk. And you will find that if we bring in the folder where we have all the files in. So as it's simulating, it's writing disk to disk. And you'll notice that it's writing both USD and VDB files as well. So depending on the file type that you like to work with, you'll be able to pick them up and start creating with them. And that is pretty much how you get started with the Storm Hydro FX engine. And by the way, before we head over to Blender, for those who might want to see what the mesh might look like, say for example, you want to see what this looks like prior to exporting, you can definitely go over to the flip system parameter settings on the viewport. You can go to the draw preview surface, right click and set this to true. And that way you can really see what this looks like. Other things that you might want to also consider doing is playing with the voxel size. So depending on the voxel size, this might give you a bit more accurate rendition of the simulation. Now let's dive right into Blender and import all of these. So with Blender simply open up right here. We can go over to File, go over to Import, and we can click on Universal Scene Description. And once we do that, you would notice that we've got USD files right here. The same thing can also be said for those that would like to work with volumes. So if you like to work with volumes, you can simply go over to the volume section, click on import open VDB, and you would notice that we've got all of them right here. So in this case, we would like to work with this one. So I'm just simply going to have one selected. Press A on the keyboard to select every other thing and click on import. And these will be imported. Now you will notice that things are not looking as expected because in Blender, Z is up and in other tools, Y is up. And for that, we need to rotate the X by 90. 
So basically, this is what we're supposed to have. Now let's simply go all the way out and press the playback button. So you can see that we have our animation happening. However, you possibly may not be seeing this. This boils down to the properties that we have here. So if we go over to the grid section, you will notice that we've got surface, velocity, and vorticity. And in most VDBs, you find densities, and that is what you can use to drive the looks of how this works. So for this one, once we press the playback button, you would see that we have animation happening, but we cannot preview it. And for us to preview this, we need to go over to our render view. And within our render view, we have cycles turned on, CPU, but we still can see this. And how we can see this is pretty easy. For this case, we're simply going to go over to our shader editor, and we're going to throw in a simple principle volume and from here we're simply going to go ahead and look for what actually defines the density and in this case is the vorticity so we're simply going to type that in and once we enter that and go back to our render view you would notice that we have this here so from here we can start doing some very cool stuff if this is what we want because this is a vdb but in most cases you might want to export a lambic and use that and for those that might just want to convert this to a mesh, you can easily do that in Blender now because we can go over to our geometry editor, have that selected, pump that into our geometry node, and we can do a simple volume to mesh. And this is set to 0.1, so we can keep it as it is. And we can also go ahead and throw in that good old subsurface, and we can have that. So we're going to throw in the subdivision surface, throw that in, and we can increase that by two, possibly make that a little bit smoother. And we can send this all the way back, press the playback button, and we have this. Now, this is going to take a while to play back because it's got all of these things going for it. And in most cases, you might just want this to run quickly. And that is where the brand new big tool, which is now available with Blender, comes in super handy. So we can set this to animation, send this all the way back, and we can simply click on the word bake. Now, instead of setting this to 250, we might just want to bake 80, you know, for time. So I'm just simply going to set this back, press the playback button, and this is going to go through and bake it. So once we press our playback button now, you'd notice that this plays a bit faster than what we have before. More reasons why this is even playing slower is because we render it. So if we simply switch this all the way back, you get the point. This plays pretty, pretty quick. So with this, you can do like a good number of things and you can just start simulating however you want. So whether you're thinking about making things like waterfall, maybe a beach, or possibly you just want to pour out liquid from one part of something to another, you can now rely on this and do all of that. It's also worth mentioning that there's a couple of interesting examples that you can work with. So in this case, if you like to explore some of the demo scenes, of course they are, so you can go through and check them out. So if we press the spacebar, we can take a look at some of the demo scenes that we have here. And we can simply go ahead and take a look at some other one. So let's take a look at the foam one. If we press the spacebar as well, we can see that this is also looking pretty nice. Let's see what the last example is. So I think what the last example is more like water on the torus. So I'm just simply going to press the playback button and you can see that. So you can go ahead and explore this and do some amazing stuff with it. This is a very interesting, simple to use tool for doing simple fluid simulations. It is totally free for anyone who would like to get it since it's in beta, and it might just be the right time for you to explore it. And speaking about things that you can explore, there's a ton of Blender add-ons out there that you can also explore. So if you're looking for fluid stuff that you can work with, there's a good number of fluid tools that are currently available for Blender. Some of them work with geometry nodes and doesn't necessarily require you to do any simulation. So you can also go ahead and explore that if you're into Blender and possibly if you're into simulations and you would like to take a look at several options out there. And speaking about options, there's also a good number of deals that are now available on Superhive and I'm going to link them in the description. More so for those who are thinking about exploring more stuff for Blender, then I'm also going to put a couple of cool links in the description that might come in handy for you. So this is it, Storm Hydro FX is now available and this is made by Sebastian, the creator of Storm. It is a simple and easy to use simulation tool which I would highly recommend that you grab if you're into simulation. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.